Alright, hello everyone. Um, so, this is uh, just a, a video that I'm doing to show off what I consider to be the most overpowered build in the entire game that you can possibly make, uh, which is a um, illusion assassin slash thief kind of build. Um, I saw somebody else on YouTube who had a video uh, about a very similar build, um, but the guy was like level 200 or something ridiculous, so I'm not too sure how he got that high or what he was doing or whatnot. And when he was going over his skills, it looked like there was a lot of stuff that just really shouldn't be there or didn't make any sense. Um, so I'm going to show you what the build can do in a second. Um, but first, I'm going to show you the skills. So let's take a look at that. All right. Um, the only thing you need to worry about in the mage tree is illusion, of course. Um, I had tried illusion a long time ago when I first played the game way, way back in November um, because I used to like playing a Nightblade as a character when they had classes back in Oblivion. Um, but illusion in this game is kind of messed up. Um, you get the expert level and the master level spells and you'll cast them on something and you'll see a lot of times you'll say the opponent is too strong or the opponent resisted or, or some crap like that. Um, the key is not to really bother with the master level skills. They require a lot of mana and oftentimes you'll run into the same issue where you'll say resisted or whatever. The big secret to the illusion magic is this skill right here. Illusion dual casting. Um, this spell you can get away with a lot of just the expert level or even the level below that um, adept um, and just dual cast those spells and they will affect the really strong mobs as you can see I'm level 65 it took quite a long time uh, to get here and um, the mobs at this level generally resist pretty much everything unless you dual cast it and that goes for everything, illusion, um, like um, invisibility, um, pacify, rage, everything. Alright, so enough about that. Let's take a look at what I got here. You'll need to get illusion all the way up to 100. You'll need all of this. Uh, hypnotic gaze. Calm spells now work on higher level opponents. That's really important. Pacify is going to be one of your major spells you'll see in a second. Um, this is great too for... Um, you know, if you just want to get a bunch of mobs off you. Rage is definitely a must, because um, you're going to be getting the master level spell Frenzy. Well, actually, it's called Mayhem, and that comes in handy when you got a whole room full of mobs to kill. And uh, this one, finally, for when you're going into Dwarven Ruins and Crypts. Um, down the other side, Quiet Casting. Uh, this is handy when you're trying to be stealthy, of course. You're building an Assassin Thief character. So basically, any spells that you cast uh, from any school now are silent, uh, so no one can hear them. Um, yeah, so just basically get that kind of pattern going there, and you're good to go. Um, alchemy, I tried doing some poisons, and I don't know, I just I don't get alchemy, so I kind of abandoned it halfway through. Didn't really put any points into anything. Speech, um, that just leveled up by itself from me just doing transactions. I didn't really bother putting points into it. If you're going to be doing the Thieves Guild, then you definitely want to go down this tree here, get a few of these things, Night Thief, Cut Purse. Um, other than that, the rest of this stuff is kind of garbage. Um, I guess you could use Poison if you're kind of into that, but I don't know. Sneaking up to somebody and pickpocketing and, and dropping a Poison thing, I don't know. Not my style i rather just come up and slit their throat, but that's just me. You might want to do it. Up to you. Uh, lock picking. Um, the way I usually do lock picking is I kind of ignore this stuff up on the side here and just go all the way up to around expert locks, and then I'll get locksmith, possibly unbreakable, which requires 100. But as you can see, I'm only at 80 here, so my next point is definitely going to be expert, and then locksmith. Locksmith basically puts the pick right at the sweet spot for the lock, so you can pick it right away. Because um, I'm a thief slash assassin, I am wearing light armor, and stealth is obviously a must. Um, 
Yeah, five points into this. Noise reduced. Don't set off pressure plates. That's always fun for dungeons. Silent roll. That's just a good time. It's a good way to get around really quickly when you're sneaking. Um, backstab. Deadly aim. Assassin's Blade. These two up here, Silence and Shadow Warrior, um, don't bother with them. I've tried them. They're kind of garbage. Light Armor. Hmm... If I was going to put any more points into this, I would put one in unhindered. And... Maybe Windwalker. If you have enough points and you want to spend them, you can go all the way up to Deaf Movement. It actually gives you a 10% chance to just dodge the attack. Um, but that only works for melee, so bow and arrow and magic and whatever will still hit you like it normally does. Speaking of bow... This is going to be one of your main tools. Uh, it's your range attack as an assassin slash thief. Um, as you can see, I'm still lacking in some points. It's really hard because I got around five or six skills here that I have to level up in order to make this build really powerful. Which is why it's now me showing you a video at level 65 instead of like level 20 or something. Um, I really wouldn't go much higher in the tree then quick shot ranger and bullseye is not really that effective you don't really notice it at least i don't i'd probably put maybe another point into critical shot here maybe bring it up to three um, slow movement by fifty percent is the next point if you put it into steady hand uh, I don't know. Um, this you don't really need much um, what i have is pretty much good for your assassin because you will be attacking everything from stealth, which, if you put your points into sneak here, your backstab and assassin's blade, uh, sneak attacks from daggers now do a total of 15 times normal damage, swords do 6 times, bows do 3 times. So you really don't need to put too much into one-handed weapons, you can kind of just get those first two perks and that's that. Um, smithing I got at 100, because I wanted to make the dragon scale armor. Um, it's still one of the best light armors in the game. Enchanting, of course, I have it up to 100. Um, you really do need to enchant stuff in this game. I don't know how you can play this game and still be effective at such a high level without enchanted gear. Um, go all the way up to extra effect. It allows you to put two enchantments on a single item. It's always handy. Um, that's about it for the skills. Under spells, uh, if you go to the College of Windhelm, um, you'll learn these basic spells, and then once you get your illusion up to 100%, uh, you'll be able to purchase the master level tomes, and the illusion teacher will actually give you a quest um, to find these secret tomes, which basically gives you mayhem. Um, this is very handy. Pacify, extremely handy. Um, invisibility, that's a must as well. And those are about the three main ones I use. I used to use Muffle, but with the armor I have now, I don't need it. So let's get to the armor that I have now. I'm not actually wearing anything. Um, just wanted to show you the character, because she never played one before. Um, the reason why I picked it is specifically for this skill that they have called Night Eye. It's a power, and it's a toggle. So it's none of this, like, use once a day thing. You can just toggle it off and on as much as you want in a single day, anytime you want. It's fantastic. Alright, the armor I'm going to be using, or that I've been mainly using, is the armor you get from doing the Thieves Guild quest. It's the final armor, Nightingale armor. I like the look, and I love the stats that it gives you. Um, I also have my armor from the Dark Brotherhood quest chain, um, and my Dragon Scale stuff, which I have to upgrade to Legendary um, and Enchant, which I haven't done yet. But this is the Nightingale armor. Um, like I said, 
possibly the coolest set of armor, well, light armor in the game that you can get. You just look friggin' pimp in it, I find. Let's see if I can get some light on it a little bit. Um, the only issue is with the Khajiit, it seems that there's like a big clipping issue with the cape, the short cape and the tail, but I don't know, I can get over that pretty quick. Alright, enough about me rambling and showing skills, let's actually show you what the build can do. Alright, so one of the first skills that I showed you earlier was called Pacify, and this is basically what it does. This guy kinda saw me, he's searching for me, my eye is getting bigger, he found me. Hit him with it, he has no desire whatsoever to attack me now. And that's it. He's dead. And what is extremely amazing about Pacify is that it is an AoE. So, area of effect spell. So you can hit maybe about four or five guys with that if they bunch around you. And now you're starting to see why this build is possibly one of the most overpowered builds in the game. Uh, you will need a lot of magicka in order to fire these off um, dual casting. It does take quite a lot. These are expert level skills, pacify. It's the expert level version of Calm. Um, so early on in the game you're going to want to put a lot of points into magicka. Um, So even if she does detect me, she's not going to want to attack. So position yourself from behind. Do 15 times damage with a dagger attack. And that's it. <laughs> so I'm just picking off these little guys. They have no idea I'm here. I'm completely stealthed. Uh, if I want to take it up a notch, I can even just... turn invisible and dual cast invisibility. Now, no one will see me unless I actually bump into them physically. Like, they're gonna run right past me. They have no idea where I am. This guy here, no idea what's going on. He has no clue. Just hit him for 15 times damage. I'm in the shadows. I'm gonna go invisible again, just in case. You can tell by the dialogue here if I shut up for two seconds that she has no idea what's going on. Alright, so this is one of the little mini bonus quests you get um, if you're doing the Dark Brotherhood. Um, I think you get it halfway through the quest chain. I hope this is not a big epic spoiler for people. Because it, it really shouldn't be at this point. The game has been out for quite a long time, so I'd imagine everyone's done these quests by now. But essentially it's a quest to go pick up some awesome assassin armor. Alright, so... Yeah, I'm not gonna go through this whole dungeon. The whole point really is just to show you the different spells. Um, I've got these two guys pacified here, I just want to show you Mayhem real quick. Um, you might have seen it before. Yes. So, just to give you an idea of how fun this is. Now imagine yourself in a crowded room with about seven or eight mobs. And you let that go off. Too powerful to pacify, which is why dual casting comes in play. This is one of the Brayheart guys. So, they are, I guess, the elite version of the Forsworn. I don't know where she came from, but she broke my pacify on the guy. Um, okay, I'm just going to kill the little guys out here, and then I'm going to pause the video, um, and then move into the keep here, uh, to do the quest. Um, 
I'm hoping to find a, a big chamber of guys so you can just see how fun mayhem actually is, uh, along with invisibility. Um, I kind of didn't do a good job of it there, but the idea is you want to mayhem the entire room. They just go berserk, kill each other. Um, as soon as you drop your mayhem, dual cast invisibility, um, no one will see you. So if they don't see you, they'll attack the next target, which in this case will be everyone else in the room. And that's how you kind of link the skills together. And then if there's anyone left after the slaughter's done, just do your pacify and then backstab each one of them. And that's basically the illusion assassin slash thief in a nutshell. Um, yeah, so I'll see if I can find a good example of that, and I'll just uh, edit that in here at the end. So there might be some weird breaks throughout the video as me just skipping through trying to find stuff for you to show you. Alright, so I'll pause it here, and hopefully I find a room full of them. Okay, well that didn't take long at all. So what I'm going to do is dual cast my invisibility first. And this is why you pick silence. If I hadn't picked the silence for the illusion tree, they would have heard that, and they would have all aggroed on me, regardless whether I'm invisible or not. Um, and the dual casting, because, again, these are all very high-level mobs. Uh, they kind of scale with you. Um... The Hag Raven is usually kind of a mini-boss, so I don't know if she'll be affected by my hysteria, but we'll find out. Sounds like she's... Oh, well, never mind. You can guess what she sounds like she's doing. Oh, crap, I have no idea what's going on. Alright, there we go. Oh, it looks like the Hag Raven did get hit by my Hysteria. She's got this red foam coming off of her, so... That's Hysteria. Oh, this one got it too. Wow, it's quite a huge area effect. That's impressive. The Hag Raven just teleported. That's right, she's the main villain for this little dungeon, so when she gets down to a certain percentile of health, she teleports to the next zone, and the next zone, and the next zone. Oh, and just a side note, if you're wondering how I'm able to switch my spells around and everything without actually pulling up my quick menu and everything, um, I actually hotkeyed them all. Uh, you can check my channel. Um, I actually did a little quick tutorial on how to hotkey things. Um, I'm playing on the PC version, so I guess that's an exclusively PC option. So, sorry for you console guys. Um, I would be awesome and link it to this video at the end, like I've seen some people do, but uh, I'm an old guy and I just really don't know how to do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> if anyone wants to like leave a comment with, like, you know, a really dumbed-down version that an old guy can understand on how to link videos to your current video in YouTube. That would be much appreciated. Ooh. Looks like a... Uh, looks like a prime opportunity for some uh, hysteria-ness. Let's see, what do we got in here? The Hagraven again. And then two more witches. So, key thing is when using Hysteria to make yourself invisible right afterwards. As you saw, they all turned to me, even though I was sneaking. Um, the invisibility essentially just drops threat on you. They can't see you, so they just turn on each other. Which is the whole point of Hysteria, correct? This is the 25% slow-mo thing, um, perk that I picked for archery. You can do the 50%, but I honestly find the 50% to be excruciatingly slow. Um, 
I find it to be more of a hindrance than a help. You guys don't need to see how much I suck at lockpicking, so I'll pause it here for a sec. You must have been nothing. Alright, so once again, just setting them all up for another mayhem barrage. Nothing more fun than having your enemies kill each other, I find. Okay, that wasn't as smooth as previous attempts, but uh, you guys get the idea. Still have no idea where this guy's stupid armor is that I'm supposed to find. But looks like I get a word of power, which is kind of cool. Slow time. Cute. So, again, this is where your pacifies come in handy. It's not that these ice wraiths are particularly annoying or anything like that. can be somewhat tricky. So again, we'll go with the try tested intrude, mayhem everything. Oops, that didn't work. Too anxious there. Mayhem. Invisible. Quickly roll away. That's it. Illusion Assassin. Clearing a dungeon. As you can see, very quick. Breeze through everything. Um, if you time everything properly, unlike what I did, um, you can essentially go through a whole dungeon without taking a single hit. So you don't really have to worry that you're wearing uh, light armor. Um, if you don't have this armor, or if you don't have any decent light armor, it really doesn't matter. Um, through invisibility, pacify, and hysteria, you will not take a hit if you do everything properly, if you time all your skills. Um, yeah, anyway, so post a comment, tell me what you think. I know this video was a little long, so I do apologize for that. Um, I'll try to make them shorter in the future. Um, yeah, anyway. Yeah, comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you got any cool builds of your own, uh, let me know. Post them in the comments. I'm always up to try something new in this game. Keeps it interesting, keeps it fresh. Alright, later. 
All right, real quick, I thought I'd just tack this on to the end. I already know I pieced out and everything like that, but uh, I just wanted to show you guys what the whole point of this stupid dungeon is. If you pick the Dark Brotherhood quest, you will eventually uh, get a token to talk to some, like, um, seer in Whiterun. Normally when you try to talk to her, she tells you, oh, she doesn't want to do your reading and tells you to basically piss off. That's because she's part of a Dark Brotherhood quest. So this is supposed to be the most amazing Dark Brotherhood armor in the game, apparently. Uh, uh, seems pretty standard. Let's take a look here. Uh, okay, so the stats. This is the regular armor that I have here that you get when you join the Dark Brotherhood, so... Their version, poison resistance at 100. Um, I have this upgraded to flawless. Uh, 144. 180. Okay, so the armor that you get from this guy, um, not upgraded, is 144 armor on the chest piece. The one that you get from the Dark Brotherhood, I upgraded. Um, to flawless and it's 180 so I can only imagine how amazing that assassin armor, the ancient Dark Brotherhood assassin armor will be once upgraded. Other than that the stats just seem to be a more um, you know increased stats which is great so I'll take that um, chest mm, nothing special just seems to be level appropriate loot so hey that's always good. Alright Peace out for reals this time.